This side of our house needs some love. It needs landscaping and it usually just collects junk. We have renovation plans for this space, but we're starting with making a concrete pad up off of the dirt that hides our trash cans with a modern privacy fence. Let me show you how you can do it too. To start this project, I moved the trash cans and all of these piles out of the way. I was just saying, I hope I don't run into any snakes. Oh my God, it's trying to get up in my house. I, I don't even know what to do about this. I need to make a frame for the concrete pad pour. And to do this, I cut up two by fours with my circular saw. And then I screwed them together at the ends. Screws will allow me to easily take the forms apart after the pour dries. We moved the form into place and then I used spray paint to paint around the perimeter of the form. And you can now see that this reveals my dig lines. Before I pour my concrete, I wanna add a gravel base to the bottom for drainage. To do this, I grabbed a shovel and I dug out a small bit of ground within my lines to make a place for the gravel. Once I had the gravel base pretty evened out, I put my wooden form back into place and made sure it was level on all sides. I picked up a wire mesh mat at Home Depot, which is gonna add some strength to my concrete slab. So this wire mesh is just a little bit too big. A while back, somebody gave me this really cool Ryobi bolt cutter. I'm finally getting to try it out. Yeah. This bolt cutter cut through the wire so well and helped me get this mesh to the right size. However, you could also use an angle grinder or inexpensive bolt cutters. Once it's cut, you wanna make sure the wire covers the size of the slab, but isn't too close to the edges. When pouring my concrete, I wanna make sure this form stays in place. To do this, I got some wooden stakes and hammered them into the ground around the form to keep it securely in place. You want to make sure the top of your stakes are below the surface of the form so they don't interfere with the concrete screeding process after it's poured. For the concrete pour, I headed over to the Home Depot rental department and rented a concrete mixer. They have everything you could need and the whole process was so easy. Right before pouring, I wet down the gravel so the ground won't steal moisture from the concrete and the concrete will cure properly. To begin the mixing process, I first added water to the empty mixer. The concrete bags we got were 80 pound bags, so it took two of us to carry them over and into the mixer. I'd make the first bag extra wet, so the second added bag had a good moisture consistency to mix into. We'd mix two bags at a time, adding water until we got an oatmeal or peanut butter-like consistency. Another bonus for the mixer. It not only mixed for us, but it made it super easy to pour the wet concrete into the form. Throughout the pour, I'd pull the wire mesh up within the concrete to make it ultimately sit in the middle of the pour. We kept repeating this process, mixing and pouring two bags at a time, spreading out the mixture across the form until we reached and poured a total of 12 80 pound bags. After all the concrete was poured, I used a straight two x four to screed the concrete level and into place using the edge of the form as my reference. I then switched to a concrete float and started smoothing out the surface. These are the post anchors that I'm setting in the wet concrete. They're gonna hold the posts for the privacy fence. To set them in place, I pushed them down into the wet concrete while it was still malleable. 
Honestly, I wished I'd set them in place about five minutes sooner as mine had already thickened a little more than I like. It was totally fine though. When you get them placed, it's super important that they are in line with each other and perfectly level. I then used an edging tool and I smoothed and rounded the edges of the slab. And then I left it all to cure. After a couple days of cure time, I knocked away the stakes and unscrewed one corner of the form. To begin the privacy fence build, I wheeled my largest bin in and measured its height. This will help me to know how tall to build my fence. I got one eight foot pressure treated post and cut it with my circular saw. I got lucky and I needed each post to be four feet tall, which means I could cut this one post in half and have my two sides. I set the first post in place and once I made sure it was level and plumb, confirmed by a post level, I clamped it into place with a strong Bessie trigger clamp. I drilled out a hole lined up with the holes in the post anchors. To secure the post to the anchors, I'm using galvanized bolts, washers, and nuts. These do well being outside and do well with treated lumber. I hammered one bolt through to the other side and then I secured it with a washer and a nut. And then I repeated the steps for the second hole. With the first post done, I then repeated the same steps to secure the second post and anchor. The slats I'm using for this fence are cedar fence pickets, which not only look really good, but are naturally rot resistant and excellent for outdoor use. I used my miter saw and I cut all my boards to size. You could also easily do this with a circular saw. I placed my first slat about an inch from the bottom and then I confirmed that this first slat was level. And then I clamped it into place, pre-drilled and screwed in my first two screws. I'm using these exterior rated trim head screws. To keep my screws in line, I kept referencing the screw line all the way up with a framing square. I wanted about a quarter inch gap between my boards. I found this quarter inch thick scrap NDF board, so I used it as a spacer. And then I continued adding the rest of the boards all the way up. Having these Bessie one-handed trigger clamps really saved me and made this part of the build when I didn't have an extra hand so much easier. By the way, this is very similar to the slatted cedar mailbox I built. I'll leave you a link down below. The very last board on my fence needed to be a little narrower, so I ripped it down on my table saw. And again, you could also totally do this with a circular saw. And then I clamped and screwed it into place. I love the way cedar looks and I wanted a way to keep the natural cedar color and prevent it from turning gray over time. I'm using Total Boat's Halcyon Clear Varnish, which is my favorite choice for exterior projects. And with the finish done, this project is done. This was a pretty simple project, but aesthetically it's a huge win. So much more visually pleasing than the trash cans and the other stuff we have stashed over here. I absolutely love the look of the modern cedar. In fact, I plan to upgrade our fence in the future to a similar look. Stay tuned for that and many other exterior projects on this fixer upper. Thanks a ton for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss all the DIY content to come. See you guys on the next project.